What's up, everybody? Joe White here on uh, New Surge Live for this week. Going to talk about a few things as you could probably see from your screen. We're going to talk about the WWE draft and how it relates to Roman Reigns and coming back. And my, uh, I'm going to stress my opinion of how they handled his suspension this past week. We're going to talk about Orange is the New Black. They uh, wrapped up season four this uh, and uh, debuted that last week or the week before last. What date was that? What date did they debut that? It was the 17th, so it's been almost two weeks. Um, and I did get to watch it. I watched it the entirely of it and the entirety of it within like less than a week. It was, it was a really really good season. Probably the best one that they've done so far. I'm gonna give my commentary on that. And then we got Spencer Gallagher versus John West Townley for the uh, Camping World Truck Series title and how that ended in a draw. We're gonna go ahead and talk about that first. Uh, here is, uh, we, we're going to bring in Fox News commentator. Fox News did this on their website. We're going to bring in Fox News commentator Jim Ross, and he's going to uh, call the action here. This is a very volatile situation indeed because Townley's smirking. He's smirking. A very dangerous situation for these two men. John West Townley, who loves that Zaxby's chicken, and who doesn't? Getting out of his car, unfolding here. Spencer Gallagher is obviously irate. Turn the children away. It's not going to get pretty here. What the hell is this? There's a takedown on the concrete. They're rolling around like two old women. My God. There's like two trust fund babies. Trust fund babies. Now he's got a front face lock. What's he doing here? Oh, my God. My God, it's a DDT, ladies and gentlemen. The DDT scores on the pavement. Let him go. He's got a family, for God's sakes. And they love chicken. My God, it's a sovereign knocker. The Zaxi people are good people. The chicken man is trying to get a chicken wing on his opponent. Let me tell you one thing. You want to talk about toughness? You know who's tough out there? The damn concrete. Not those two yahoos. They're grasping each other like they're going to the senior prom. My God. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's, let's run through that again, and I'll give my commentary on this year. I thought this was great. Oh, Lord. Let's go back here. <laughs> it was volatile. He's smarking. Smarking. <laughs> Sound of the bell and we're off. Two old women. Oh, that was pretty rough. You can tell the guy uh, Townley there has uh, has some background in wrestling. Actually, it looks like these both both these guys do, but grabbing the wrist control there and chicken man. <laughs> Games. <laughs> and then the bell rings again and the NASCAR official comes in to break it up but uh, I, I'm glad that, that Jim Ross has a, a relationship with Fox Sports and, and can do things like that that's that's pretty good he, he should get permission to, from Fox Sports to implement stuff like this in his live shows I think I think it would be uh, pretty cool um, so that, that takes care of that right there um, I, it's so funny. They're grasping each other like they're going to the senior prom. <laughs> so, uh, you know who's tough out there? The concrete, not those two yahoos. That, that's pretty good. You know, got to speak in sound bites. Who knows? Maybe now that they've uh, they're turning right and left this past weekend, maybe they'll get Vince Russo in there to do some commentary. And speaking of Vince Russo, I want to talk about him for a minute. He was not one of my topics, but this guy has to be the most livered you know, lily livered idiot to ever be a part of the, 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 the pro wrestling industry. This guy gets fired from TNA. Well, he got fired from TNA for going on Jim Ross's podcast, according to some people. But he sends an email, thought he was sending it to Mike Denae, and he ended up didn't sending it to Mike Johnson instead. So he got ousted after he was already, quote-unquote, fired as being a, uh, a sports cat or a uh, consultant. So, he he then gets fired from TNA again. 
Right before they brought in Billy Corgan, I think. And once TNA made the move to pot, pop TV, not pot TV, it's coming though. I can see it now. High Times Television. There you are. Anyway, they make the move to pop TV, and Vince Russo takes it upon himself to contact the the executives at Pop TV. The head honchos, if you will. And tell them, look, you just bought a, a bad bill of goods. Let me come in and be a consultant for you. And we'll, we'll, we'll turn this around and get you those, those million viewers that you want, that you thought you were getting. This guy admitted to try to hamstring TNA. He went blatantly behind their back. And tried to get a job again. He tried to sneak through the back door. Well, I guess they were uh, they were keen to it and put a stop to it. But golly, how how uh, how stupid do you got to be to try to do that? I mean, really, how stupid and, and self-centered and moronic do you got to be to try to to sneak your way into that company one more time? You already killed it. You've already, you've already, you know, killed it and pulled its life support. If somebody answer me this, how are they able to sign all these guys like Caleb Connolly and they signed Trevor Lee and they re-sign Lashley, which of course nobody else wants them, but they re-sign and hire all these guys, yet they can't make enough money to roll production trucks without having to rob Peter to pay Paul. Anyway, that's enough on there. The WWE Draft is about, let me see, as the time I'm recording this, it is one, two, three weeks away. Golly, are we really that close? We got two, I'm recording this on the 29th of July. The next SmackDown taping is on Tuesday the 5th. Then you got the 12th and the 19th. So you might as well say one, two, Two and a half weeks away. Almost three. Who who counts? Anyway. And Roman Reigns last week got suspended for a wellness policy violation. Well, due to HIPAA laws, we will never know how or, or what he got suspended for. And it could be something, something as simple as what Hornswoggle got busted for, which was not providing a sample within their three-hour time limit, I think he said on the U-shoot. Chances are, though, it's probably a human growth hormone or something that he shouldn't have taken. And here I'm thinking that WWE was going to sweep this under the rug. They were just not going to mention it. And in three weeks, we would see him at Battleground. But no, they... they, they called it the Roman Reigns scandal and tried to have Seth Rollins play a total heel off of it. But I I think this is wrong what they're doing. He's still in the match. The match is still on. And we're going to have two more weeks of build up between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. And of course they're probably going to talk about Roman Reigns. They're going to mention Roman Reigns on TV. But we're not going to see him. My thoughts on it are this. If he gets. So he obviously can be drafted now. Because all they got to do is put up a picture of him. Saying Roman Reigns has been drafted to Smackdown. Or Raw. Blah 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 blah. So. I I think that if if they allow him to come back like this. It's crazy. It's downright crazy if they let him come back like this and just win the belt. And I, I, I don't think he'll win the title. He doesn't need to win the title, but I, I, if he does, man, that's crazy. If he, if they let him come back and win that strap like that, it's absolutely crazy. I don't agree with this, really. I, I really don't. And it, 
it, it's further that they will manipulate that wellness policy. You know, they did it with Orton. Didn't they have Orton work for 30 days without pay? I don't know, guys. I, I Let me know what you think in the comments below. I just don't agree with what they did. <clears throat> And I, and, and I know what you people are going to be going, you're just saying that because it's Roman Reigns, you stupid mark. If it, was, if it was AJ Styles, you'd be letting him in the match. No. I think it, it, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You sit your ass at home for 30 days. But then again, there, there is another side to this. That, okay, you've taken your 30 days, you've taken your licks, and here you're square with the house again. And here you go. But professional wrestling, as far as morale goes, what kind of message are you sending to the rest of the boys? Then again, you know, Titus O'Neil serves a suspension for, for goofing off with Vince. Two months. Or was it three months? Whatever. And he comes back and he's pushed right into the title picture with Rusev. It's an entirely separate issue. I know that. I get it. But are you sending a message to the boys that go ahead, fuck up on your wellness policy. We'll just keep your place here nice and warm when you get back. And they knew about the damn policy violation before they even made the match. We're going to take a break. When we come back, when we come back, folks, we're going to take a little bit of a look at the... Uh, at the uh, Roman Reigns situation even further. We'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Um, so, yeah, that was my thoughts on Roman Reigns. I, I just think that if, if he comes back and gets thrust right back into the title picture, it doesn't say a whole lot for morale backstage, even with the roster split happening. And if I'm on... If I'm in that locker room right now, I'm praying to be on a different brand than this guy, to be honest with you. If I'm in NXT right now, I'm praying to God that they don't call me up. Been saying that for the last two years now almost. The way they treat these NXT guys is crazy, man. Just, just they, they, they build them up down there. Triple H does such a good job building them up, and then all of a sudden they crash them back down. And the only thing Triple H could do is, is look at these guys and you know, like we saw on that, on that. Uh, Breaking Ground special. He looked right at Enzo and Cass and was just like, it's a whole different world. Whatever you've done down here now don't mean shit. Which is sad. Because it's all under the same corporate umbrella. I, I don't know. I, I just don't get it. That draft is going to be something to see too. They're actually doing it on a Tuesday night, the same night as SmackDown. It goes live, I should say. At the same time, SmackDown goes live. So it should be interesting to see. Are they going to let general managers pick? Which now they're not calling them general managers. They're calling them chief operating officers. COOs. You know, the, the two people that we have not seen yet, as far as, as, as general managers in the past, they brought Kane back for two weeks. You figure there at the beginning of June when they first announced this thing, you figure they would have Eric Bischoff back. Trying to weasel his way in there for a cameo, you know? Seeing as how his DVD came out probably, I think, the same week that they announced this. Or the week after. And we haven't seen Vicky Guerrero back yet. Which, uh, Vicky Guerrero, from what I understand, has a, you know, trying to get her nursing degree. She's trying to become a medical nurse. 
which is why she left in the first place. So, I, I don't see her, you know, I don't see her coming back. Bischoff, however, it's a possibility. The question is, do they come and bring him back for a cameo, or do you bring him in to run the thing for about a year? Or do you just keep him off TV completely? I don't think they're going to bring him back at all, to be honest with you. It would shock the hell out of me if, we came, if he came back as a COO of one of these two brands, storyline-wise. Orange is the New Black finished up. And it it's amazing to me. This season was amazing, man. From from Piper thinking she had the cock of the walk and was the the uh, basically the, the the head honcho of the, uh, everybody, and that gets foiled into forming a, a white power group within the prison. And this this whole season covered a lot of things, man. From gun control to race relations to the hierarchy as far as classism goes. You know, from the whole thing of, uh, of, you know, the, 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 the Black Lives Matter and all that, you know, with the, with the, the Piscatella and the new guards coming in. Where is he? Let, let's get a, let's get a shot of Piscatella up on the screen here. See if we can find a picture of Piscatella and the new guards. There they are. Piscatella there on the far right. And what kills me is that it turns out that the uh, the guy who they got playing Piscatella, his character is gay. It's Pipe, you know, Piper tries to uh, start a relationship with him, and he's like, you know what, I I, I eat cock, <laughs> so here you ain't gonna work. And then the middle guard here, I forget his name, he brings in a, a gun into the prison in the final episode. Spoilers, by the way. So I, I think, you know, it's it's at the end of the season, Piscatella's probably still there. The the kid who ended up uh, strangling Poussey is still employed. And all hell is breaking loose in the prison. Now we also have a uh, one other character that amazed me here was Judy King. And her whole character, which got introduced in the last episode of the last well, she was actually introduced in a couple episodes last season. There she is. And it amazes me to think if she may not be back next season. I don't think she is. Her whole character to me this year was a little bit for comic relief. They did it because of the whole Martha Stewart coming into jail thing from about a decade ago. But other than comic relief, her character is pretty much pointless. She's there. She gets special treatment. Yoga. She was there to give Yoga Jones something to do this season. That's pretty much it. The, uh, the big thing this year for me was... Uh, was Lolly and Healy and their special bond that they formed. We got a lot. We got to know Healy a lot this year, and uh, what they have to do to you know what what his background is with his crazy mom. And one night she's just up and gone and left. And we learned that Lolly's pretty much the same way. Lolly played by Lori Petty, which was um, played Tank Girl. And she did Free Willy. She was one of the. Uh, she was the head uh, whale trainer in the movie Free Willy. Does an absolutely phenomenal job here in this in this series. And I was kind of like crazy at the end when they when they carted her off to Seg, or not Seg Psych. Healy checks her into Psych for murdering somebody. To when she saved. Uh, Alex Voss, you know, when she say Voss at the beginning of the season, because that was the whole thing, was Voss going to die? Turns out he she saves her at the beginning. Lolly saves Voss at the beginning of the season. Good, you know, that, that kind of wrapped up quick for me, too. Then they end up chopping up the guy and burying him, and one of the older ladies is like, you know what, this ain't my first rodeo. 
we got to kill Lolly because Lolly's going to mouth off with her craziness and we you know Lolly thinks she's seeing drones around which turns out she is seeing drones around but the drones are there sent by the tabloids it's never fully stated that they are there to do this but one can assume and one can bring to the conclusion that the drones are sent by the tabloids to get pictures of Judy King in prison which they end up getting a picture of Judy King but Judy King is kissing Black Cindy in order to clear her name off of uh, some racist video that was resurfaced from the 80s and ruined her career and like I said that whole storyline there was pointless to me but they tied it into the Lolly and Healy situation with the drones and everything like that uh, that's the only part of the Judy King storyline that really made any sense And one has to wonder what's going to happen to So-So, because So-So and Puse, or P, as she's affectionately known as, was, uh, they had a thing going on. And it's clearly seen in the last episode that, uh, So-So is really torn up about it and steals P's, uh, stash of hooch out back at the library to co and gets drunk off of it. And then the meth heads find it and get drunk off of it and... A lot of unanswered questions at the end of the last episode of this season, which should be the case. Is Healy going to come back? We didn't see Porn Stash at all this year. Um, we don't know exactly what happened to Daya's baby at the end of this. The girl who had the baby at the very start of the first season, she became a big bad, you know, drug dealing thing and ends up she gets three to five years on her sentence now so she won't be seeing her kid anytime soon as far as the series goes but uh you know i have to wonder are the guards is like piscatell and the new guards are they going to be still in there in the prison and is healy going to come back will we see lolly again A lot of unanswered questions from Norns and the New Black, but I will have to say that this is probably the very, probably the best season that they've done so far as far as storyline, as far as plot, as far as bringing everything together. It did. There were no filler episodes to me in this. None. It was very well done. And I, I, I hope that more than that, you know, you got a lot of TV coming our way, guys, this this uh, this fall. You got uh, Luke Cage is getting his own, net, own Netflix series. You got Walking Dead coming back. You got this whole draft thing happening with SmackDown and everybody like that coming in here shortly. With the, with the WWE coming up shortly, I should say. You got, I mean, of course, as you know me, I, I'm a big fan of Arrow and Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. Supergirl is coming back on the CW. That's four superhero shows on four different nights. And, and if they, they can only book Supergirl, they have to book it either on, on Mondays. Friday is a shit spot for a superhero. <laughs> Nobody's home. So you got Monday night for me. This is how my TV schedule is going to go this, this this coming fall. Monday nights is Raw and Supergirl, which I'll probably wind up watching Supergirl on delay. Tuesdays is Flash, and now SmackDown's been added to the mix. Wednesdays is Arrow. Thursdays is Legends of Tomorrow, if they even bring Legends back, which I think they are. Um, I still have not finished the finale of that sh the first season. I, I lost interest in it pretty much after... Um, well, I didn't wouldn't say lose interest, but I stopped watching after the Jonah Hex episode. Just, you know, didn't feel like watching it. There's too much other stuff going on for me. But uh, I'll get to it at some point, definitely before the next season. Got a lot of good TV coming out this fall, man. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. And you know what kills me as far as WWE goes? Think about it this way. You got... You might as well say four hours of, of live TV on Sundays when there's a pay-per-view. Then you got three hours of live TV on... You know, then you, then you got three hours of live TV on Monday. 
So that's seven hours of live wrestling on a pay-per-view week. Then you got two more hours on Tuesday coming up. And then you got one hour of NXT, which it's not it's it's taped. But that's ten hours of WWE TV on a pay-per-view week. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. That's going to do it for me here today. A short episode this week. I'm still trying to get a... Uh, I'm still trying to get Jeff Edwards on. We need to talk some New Japan coming up. A lot of things happening in New Japan. A lot of things changing in New Japan. But uh, we'll get into that next time. Hopefully with uh, Mr. Edwards. And see what he's got going on. Uh, he's been busy. He's been sick. Hope he's feeling, he's feeling better. But there's a lot of stuff going on there with Mr. Edwards. We need to get him back on the show. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up this week. Thank you so much. You can follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash newsearchalive. I'm also on Twitter at Wrestling Truck. You can find me there. I will tweet back and forth with you. Also, drop us a line, newsearchlive at yahoo.com. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have on any future episodes. If you want to get a Q&A going with me, go ahead and leave questions there. I will do my best to answer them. I'd like to thank you all so much for listening and watching. As always, we'll see you down the road. <laughs>